Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Welcome to uh, Community Awareness Series from the Jersey City Free Public Library. Uh, this is one of our programs in the line or a series of programs. And, uh, we're very happy to have uh, Brother Winnard Hopper here with us today. Uh, we're kicking off African American History Month. And a good way to do it is because jazz music was born and created and innovated right here in America by the African American community and has spread throughout the world and respected throughout the world. And we see the importance of jazz music in our cultural heritage. And that's so with that, I want to mention also that Winard Hawker, for those that do not know, has has a number of CDs out, some are on the back table. We just recently had a new CD produced. If you don't have it, please avail yourself to it. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's something that will be with you for years to come. Winard has played with some of the great, great jazz legends of our time, such as Dexter Gordon, Betty Carter, Johnny Griffith, Ray Bryan, Abdullah Ibrahim, Pharaoh Sanders, Clifford Jordan, Joe Lovano, Frank West, Jimmy Heath, and Dr. Billy Taylor, just to name some of uh, his uh, associates in that on the music scene. And that so, you know, Winard always brings a terrific band in here to Miller Branch Library. And that I want to thank each and every one of you, and in particular, we have one of Jersey City's own. Uh, music legends with us, and that's Cliffy Perkins. Okay, Cliffy. I also want to mention at the Bethune Center, they just put up the Wall of Fame, and uh, you get an opportunity to go by there. There's some of the pioneers and movers and shakers of Jersey City in all walks of life, all fields, that contributed particularly to the African American community. That's on display permanent display at the Bethune Center, and one of the chief organizers for that event was Mr. Eugene McKnight. Yeah. And, uh, a gentleman who we always have happy to see him because he brings by so much wonderful history through memorabilia, through photographs and music and so forth, has a wonderful display in the back on jazz drummers, as well as the Tuskegee Admin and so forth, Mr. Roy Woods. Roy Woods, thank you for being here. So with that, on behalf of the Community Awareness Series, let us welcome the one and only, Winard Hopper. Thank <laughs> you. 
not a jazz fan, and tonight I think you'll become one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great Bernard Hoffman. We're going to continue in a second. I just want to mention a couple other people to give them recognition for their talents, and that's uh, Mary Aikens here. Oh, yeah. Michael Logan. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miller Branch, uh, head of Miller Branch Library, is here with us also. Miss Renee Newton, Sidney Jackson. Our staff, Steve Pinkney and, yes. and uh, Barbara Williams, yes. uh, Robert McGoma, Sabora Williams, and a host of others that make this program happen. We're celebrating uh, over 36 years of presenting live cultural arts, entertainment, education, you name it. And uh, way back when, I, back in the mid 80s, I think it was, a, a young man approached me and said, uh, I, he'd like to have his band play here, and that was the Harper Brothers with Winnard and Philip at that time. Winnard's been keeping the music alive from then. Before then, then and now, and into the future. Again, Winard has CDs in the back, so I hope you can avail yourself to it. You'll enjoy it forever and ever. Again, let's continue with the Winard Harper Band. One thing I want to mention too, we have with us a candidate who's going to run for freeholder here in Hudson County, Mr. Jerry Ballman. Jerry Ballman is back here. Thank you for coming up. Jerry Ballman. Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further, I want to, don't go nowhere. I want to acknowledge this brother, because yes. he's been around a long time. I mean, ever since I first moved to Jersey City. And they've been doing these events. I mean, how was the price coming in? What was the price? <laughs> and, and they've always brought in international quality, New York quality entertainment that our community gets over here for that price. You would think the seats would be full and people would be standing outside. Because people in New York are standing in line from time to time paying $40, $50. I mean, that's just on the light side. That's not even counting the tunnel, the parking, and all that other extra stuff to go with it. Table charge, tablecloth charge, the silly way it's cleaning charge, you know. But y'all get this for that price. I mean, you can't beat it. And they've been doing it for years. I even tell my, the young guys here in the band to go around and look at the wall and see some of the talent that's been here. I know a, a couple of months ago, Lou Donaldson was here. Oh, yeah. Lou was here. Uh, I know McCoy Tyner's been here. Uh, I know there's a picture back there with me playing with David Fathead Newman. I mean, way back there. You know what I mean? David Fathead Newman was here. I mean, that's just a, 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 a shortest. Abdul Ibrahim. Eddie Jefferson. Randy Weston. I mean, listen, I, I mean, that's Kenny Barron. So, but they need the support. The only way we can keep events and things like this going in our community is for y'all support it. And I know it's like preaching to the choir, because y'all are here, but tell some of your friends and all your enemies, you know, <laughs> tell them to come by here and support this. And while we at it, please, a wonderful round of applause for Dowell Williams and all the staff. For years, I've come here for this month in particular. I always ask for this Black History Month because um, I think most jazz musicians, especially for my growing up, all the guys I played with and had a chance to be around, they love the history and especially our history. You know, it's so rich and, and full of things. And when I look at it, look back over it and talk with all the guys, it seems like one of the things too that attracted me to this music was that. Um, the jazz musicians have always been like uh, liberators. You know, they were the soldiers for the culture and the community. Because they helped bring about some integration and all kinds of stuff way before anybody was talked about. You know, those guys that went over to Europe and introduced people 
to the music over there. And then in my study, come to find out something new. I didn't know, I know how many of you knew. Anybody in here, if you knew, raise your hand, tell me that they knew that, that they were black people caught up in the Holocaust? Yeah. 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 And very few people know that, but there's, if you ever get a chance, there's a young lady by the name of Valeda Snow. She was a big time musician back in her day. But over in Europe touring, when everything went down, she got caught behind enemy lines. And they got locked up in the concentration camps. I think they said before, before she was locked up, she might have weighed 140 something pounds. When they found her, she was barely 100. And once they got out, she didn't last too much longer after. But look, get on the internet and look up. But that's some, some more of our history. And usually we don't hear about those people because the Nazis at that time, like anything else, if you were black and they caught you, they didn't figure you worth keeping. So we ain't no telling how many in those ditches. But somebody came on their behalf and said, look, these are jazz musicians. They could be important to you. And that's what they did. They took her and her group. They had to work the fields during the day. You know what they did in the evening, right? <coughs> and go play for them. <laughs> Feel me? That was every day. But that's just a, a, a piece of the history. But that's what the jazz musicians have always been and what this music has been. It's so vitally important to us that we need your help. All of these young guys coming along, they need to have places to play and people to play for. And it's up to us. So please help us to keep promoting this music, bringing youngsters to the music, new blood, because we need to replenish the jazz audience. I want to remind you again, I do have some flyers and cards and CDs in the back. Please get them and see them. And now let me introduce all these very fine, talented, hard-working professionals to you. That's right, professionals. Hey, and this is the amazing thing about this music. If you, if you do some studying and you know the language, you can get on the bandstand and speak. And I don't care who it is. I mean, sometimes I'll be overseas playing with people and somebody has to translate for me. Because I don't understand what they're saying, they don't understand what I'm saying. But if we know the language of this music, we can get on the bandstand and play and play for people. This young man I just met today, this is his first time with the band. He's come in to fill in for a few minutes for this. You're going to learn about him as I do. Where you, you originally from DC? I'm originally from New York. Oh, you're originally from New York? New York City. Well, how did I get you from DC? I, I spent time out in DC a couple of years, and now I'm back in the city. So, you're originally from New York? What part? Uh, Brooklyn. Born in oh, yeah. the People's Republic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brooklyn. Ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful, wonderful round of applause, Mr. John Williams. Over to my right on alto saxophone, this dapper young man. He's from, he's probably the richest guy in the band. <laughs> he's from Somerset, New Jersey. Yeah. And I mean, he's really a globe harper. We've been trying to get him to help us out because he goes to China like two or three times a year, if not more. I don't know what's happening in China, but whatever it is, I need to be a part of it. <laughs> uh, but a very, very wonderful talent. Please, a wonderful round of applause for Mr. Anthony Ware. Saxophone from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I'm proud, I usually tell people, not only is this a talented band, this is an educated band. This young man just received his master's degree last year this, this time. And I'm uh, very, very proud of him. Please, a wonderful, wonderful round of applause. A very talented Mr. Jonathan Bechet. And this band is also international. And that's the beauty of this music as well, is that people come from all over the world to be a part of this, to listen to it, to contribute to it, to learn how to play it. I mean, every day, folks is coming in from all kinds of places, Taiwan, China, Australia, you name it, all over Europe. This young man at the piano, he's from Tokyo, Japan. A very talented young man who just had, a, not too long ago, I think last month or a month before last, he had a stint at the Village Vanguard with uh, great drummer Jimmy Cobb. Please, a wonderful, wonderful round of applause, Mr. Tata Taka Udo. <laughs> On the country bass fiddle, 
from Chicago, Illinois. Shut down. Yes, 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 shut down. Now, I'm not sure where he's living now. It seems like he's, he's been going back and forth. Where are you living now? He's living in Manhattan. Moving on up. <laughs> Moving on up. Man, are you sure? Yes. You stay up with somebody, you bought a place. Buy a place. Very, very talented young man. He's been in the band uh, for about a year now. I'm very, very proud to have him. Please, a wonderful, wonderful round of applause for Mr. Greg Feingold. Burkina Faso, Africa. Yes, 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 indeed. On the Jimbe. And boy, I tell you, boys, you know, the motherland and this music, boy, they go together, don't they? And I mean, you just can't go wrong. I always tell people, I'll tell you how I met this young man. I was up in Harlem doing my shopping, you know. I go up there and get my clothes. All the African brothers, they know I'm coming. They sold my stuff for me. A couple of days I got it. I went up to see this one shop, the brother now getting some shirts, and he knows me, you know, he knows I play drums. He knows I'm always looking for hand drummers. He said, hey man, my buddy over there plays drums. I mean, this guy's just sitting in a chair, right on the street in Harlem. I said, oh, he plays drums? I said, can you play? He said, yeah, 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 I can play. I said, well, I was gonna tell him about the jam session we do at Moore's, you know, on Fridays, tell him to come by and sit in. But he pulled out his phone. You know, nowadays, boy, technology. <laughs> Cue me up a video, <laughs> you know, and play some of the stuff. And I'm like, you know, it's okay. But see, people don't understand. It's one thing to be able to play and play, you know, different kinds of music. But it's a whole nother thing trying to play this music. You know, do it. It don't, sometimes it don't always hook up like that. But I said, but I didn't hear him any further. I said, look, I got a gig next week. Come out and see us. Boy, the brother came out and lit it up. That, that was all she wrote. Okay. Cool, cool. And uh, he's a very, very talented young man. He just got back himself. He went home for two months. Yes, yes, yes. Must have been nice. How much snow was it? <laughs> no snow? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, one of one of round of applause, Mr. Mamadou Kanate. Not yet, right? Yes. Never know nowadays, though, right? <laughs> listen, listen, I'm from Georgia, and all the whole time I was down there growing up, we never had no snow. I mean, we would we were praying to get a little bit of snow. Man, just, I, my mother called me the other day, sent me a picture, they had about four inches. Oh. And then after that, they had an earthquake. That ain't ever happened. So, you know, hey, something's going on, you know? 4.2. Yeah, yes, indeed. Let me tell you a little bit about what we just finished playing for you. The last composition was one written by a um, very, very talented uh, pianist from Newark, New Jersey, who did a lot of Blue Note recordings. His name was Sonny Clark. And the composition was entitled Something Special. And we recorded it, it's on our latest CD. And that CD I'm, I'm really, really proud of, I have to tell you, because uh, one of the guys played their tails off. And number two, I always try to do CDs and I kind of mix up a whole lot of stuff and I always bring some of the guys, if I can, that I've worked with over the years, some of the older guys. And then I guess I'm in the middle now. It used to be I was the baby of the band. Now <laughs> I'm in the middle. So I have these guys that are like, you know, a generation or two above me, then myself, and then the young guy. So it usually works out pretty nice. But this last CD, uh, I had worked for about 15, 20 years with the late, great Frank West. And I asked him to come do the CD with us, and he came and played on two tracks. Now mind you, at the time, he was already about 89. 89 years old, he came and played his tail off. But we since lost him, I think it was, was it December? October, was October he passed? Wow, time be moving, boy. Yeah, he passed away in October, but uh, man, he was a great friend and a, and a wonderful talent. I really, really miss him. But Frank, I have two tracks of Frank West on that CD. And that composition was entitled Something Special. We opened up the set with something that I always open up because I think it's what we need. It's entitled God is the Greatest. Now, I'd like to do a composition for you now that I recorded Ooh, I don't even want to say how many years ago, but it was quite a few years ago. And at that time, I used a great singer who was on Broadway, 
uh, doing, what was it, Black and Blue. She was doing Black and Blue, Miss Carrie Smith, who we since lost, you know, a couple of years ago. But Carrie came and sang this for us. And I just met this young lady, because I have a jam session, as I was saying, on Fridays we do over at Morris Lounge, 189 Monticello, and all are welcome. You sing, dance, tell jokes, you know, come in, do a speech, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's open. It's an open jam session, we come in, sing, play an instrument, whatever it is, but it's just it's for the community, for us to keep congregating. And uh, this young lady came in, she just moved to town from Tennessee, from Tennessee, and this is gonna be her first time performing here, I know, I don't know about the area, but for certainly here. Okay. And she's gonna do this composition for you, and I hope you all recognize it. If you don't, please see me. <laughs> if you don't know this, yeah, definitely see me. And I have that, we'll take you upstairs to the library. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put our hands together, we're gonna to welcome to the bandstand, Miss Dermell. Let her hear. <laughs> And once we get into this, if you know it, you're supposed to sing along, hopefully. So, and like I said, there again, if you don't, please see me. Bye. 
many in here know that song? <laughs> Come on now, don't be ashamed. If you don't know, we, we have to, that was what they print the words out for. <laughs> so we're gonna have to do this again so I can hear y'all. So stand up and rise. We all hit this like it's supposed to be hit. <laughs>
for one of a round of applause for Mr. Bill. Over here. Yeah, 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 for now. <laughs> she just moved to Jersey City, and like I said, that's her first time. Y'all give a wonderful round of applause. You enjoying yourself so far? Yeah. I'm telling you, these guys up here playing like y'all paid $50 to get in here. How <laughs> about a wonderful, wonderful round of applause, Mr. Jonathan Bechet, tenor saxophone. His first time, first time seeing the music, first time meeting most of us, doing a wonderful job. John Williams. Mr. Anthony Ware on the alto saxophone. <laughs> Tanataka Uno on the piano. <laughs> Greg Feingold on the bass. <laughs> Mr. Mamadou Kalate. Thank <laughs> you. 
a short break. Come back with some more music for you. Are you enjoying yourselves? They can't hear you. Are you enjoying yourselves? We want you to remember we have some CDs back in the back. And some cards, business cards, if you'd like to take us home with you. And some of the things that will help us keep this music going. When you get home, get on the internet, let people know what you saw, what's happening over here in the library. Also, what we're the band is doing. You know, tweet about us, put it up on YouTube. Anything to help promote the music and keep it happening. We're going to take a short break and come back with some more music. Once again, a wonderful round of applause for Jervell.
very much. You like that? Yeah, I'm happy to record that for the, for the, next, the next CD. Frank West, I mean, uh, I have to say, I was very, very blessed to have worked with, seen, and been around the people that I had the opportunity of working with, because, um, I mean, I can't, you know, it's hard to even describe those guys, because especially from that era, because they were so distinguished. You know, they, they were gentlemen, they were master musicians. Uh, you know, it was, it was like seeing, you know, kings. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. You know, kings and queens is the way they carried themselves. Because they had to. That's what they came up out of. And that was the thing, was representing themselves so they could represent the people. So people around the world would look and say, wait a minute. It's more to these people than what you're telling us. You know what I mean? So uh, those guys like Frank West, Dr. Billy Taylor, and Betty Carter, Carmen McRae, I mean, Dexter Gordon. I mean, it's just, just, you know, national, national treasures. I mean, and I'm very proud and honored to say I had the opportunity of uh, working with them. And uh, this is the next crop coming. And they'll have it because y'all helped us give it to them. Yes, indeed. Mr. John Williams. Mr. Jonathan Bache. Mama Du Lanate. Anthony Ware. Tadataka Wundu. Greg Feingold. As I promise, we're gonna make this real quick. I'm not gonna keep you uh, too long, but I do definitely want y'all to look us up on the internet, get on there, talk about us, tell people, because one thing about it, in order for me to keep these guys working, for the music to continue, I need work. I need the band to work every day if possible. Two or three times a day be good for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we need it. So whatever y'all know about, the more y'all talk about us, put us in suggestion boxes and places that you go to, concert halls, whatever. Hopefully, it, it, you know, will translate into uh, us coming out here bringing this medicine, this music to people. I'd like to continue in keeping in the theme of Black History Month too. Just do some things representative. And uh, I always tell people, even though I play drums, I've always had a love for singers. So a lot of people are surprised sometimes. But I mean, back in the day, I tell people when I used to go on the road with Betty, uh, you know, that's when you could really carry some luggage. On the airplane, you know what I mean? So I used to have one piece of luggage that just would have speakers and CDs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cassette tapes. And I don't mean little speakers either, man. I mean those speakers I was carrying. Yeah, I look at them now, I'm like, how the hell did I come out with that? I, mean, I had some big old Sony speakers. I mean, I mean, together they had to weigh about 15, 20 pounds. But that's how we used to roll, man. We get to the hotel, we sit up, put the wires in and stuff. Be like you. <laughs> But no iPods and all that stuff, man. We would be home, everybody had their CDs and stuff, and cassette tapes. I mean, we had bags full of that stuff, man. But I always, you know, people would be surprised because in my collection, most of them would be singers. I had Billy Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, Nat King Cole, Little Jimmy Scott, you know what I mean? Dinah Washington. I, I have a ton of Dinah, that's my baby. But I have like a whole pile of just nothing but singers because I loved it. And, um, Billie Holiday was one of my introductions into the music, so we'd like to invite Dermel back up. We're going to do one that I think you all recognize. Give her a wonderful round of applause.
Sit in and play, we're more than welcome and we'll accommodate you. I have another gentleman in the house, very, very dear friend. Let's get to the point now, I've known everybody a long time. <laughs> Grace is alive. I might have been here longer than I thought. <laughs> but it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. And uh, he's a very dear friend and a talented young man. I mean, he does a little bit of everything. Paint. Great painter. I mean, he go by his house and see some of his artwork. Matter of fact, he's let me rehearse there a couple times. I had the guys up there, we rehearsed. He got his paintings up on the wall. We're like, dang. Writes poetry. I mean, he does a little bit of everything. But I had, uh, on the CD, I recorded a uh, composition of David Fathead Newman's. And um, I recorded it because I thought, it, one, David had passed. We were 
great friends. I, you know, I wanted to do something his. And besides the composition fit, to think the times that we're living in now and what a lot of us are experiencing. So, and that's what, that's what jazz has always been. It's been representative, you know, of the, uh, of the community and the culture. So we recorded it, and it's a, it's a great tone. I'd like to do it for you now, because he's <coughs> under the uh, advisement of Mr. Greg Feingold. He asked Cliff to put some lyrics to it. So Cliff put some lyrics to this composition, and uh, we hope you will enjoy our rendition of Hard Times. <laughs> Be out of here so nobody be mad at me. Especially <laughs> <laughs> the boss lady. Boss lady, tell her to come down. Maybe we let her dance a little bit. You, you don't mind grabbing the boss lady's hand and dance a little bit. Make her feel at home. <laughs> Thank you. Don't forget too. You know, this we're gonna wrap up. We have some CDs left out there, and also please sign that mail in this for me. Give us your address or your email address so we can stay in touch. Let you know where we are and uh, try to keep you posted. <laughs> So I think we'll let us put it down once, and then you come in. Okay. Brother Anthony! Is you good? <laughs>
we're going to do some special things here. All of the cultural things that we're trying to do around town. Please remember the jam session on Fridays in Forest Lounge. the website, see where we are next. I think the next thing is March 1st in Newark, somewhere. Before we go, please give all of the staff here at the library and that would want a round of applause. And I also have to send out thank yous to two of my sons back there. Thank you.